My name is Choice Ufama Okoro. Um, I work with um, the humanitarian arm of the United Nations. I've been working with the United Nations now for about 12 years, but before that, I worked with the um, NGOs around Africa, North America, and the UK for about eight years. So in total, I have about 20 years, you know, in the field of human rights, humanitarian aid, and development. I came into the humanitarian field very passionate in my, in my late teens and early 20s because I believed in it. I still do. I think one of the gifts of the international system of multilateral organizations, including the United Nations, is that we have a system in place that can be deployed immediately there's a crisis to reduce the length of human suffering. My concern is that it's been misapplied in many countries in Africa. For example, early in the year, there were about 21 countries that were appealing for humanitarian assistance, meaning that they are going to the global arena to appeal, to ask through the joint system, humanitarian joint appeal system, that the crisis they are facing is beyond their capacity and they needed external assistance. 14 of these countries were from Africa and many of these countries had been appealing every year for many years. In fact, there were some that had been on the appeal radar for over 10 years. That was not what it was intended to do. You see, look at the humanitarian appeal or in an, an international humanitarian presence as putting somebody on life-saving support. When somebody is on life-saving support and they, they need recovery, you must get them out. Leaving them on life-saving support can create other complications. And that's how I see some of the way international humanitarian presence is being used or Africans have allowed it to be used because it's not something that is done to us, it's something we've allowed. You see, the, the greatness and amazingness of my work is that when you have a crisis, there's discord and disarray. Just think a sudden onset disaster like an earthquake. Think of the chaos, there's no electricity. The water is, there, there's no water, nothing, the water is contaminated. The United Nations, the world has a system in place that can get in and ensure we have a coordinated response immediately. But the intention is to go in there, provide that short-term response, then hand over to the national authorities to continue the work. In Africa, it's not so anymore. In contexts where you need development, you have humanitarian presence that is there long-term. Every year, African countries are going to the global arena to beg for funding for issues that should be addressed with development. So rural communities are being addressed, you know, as context for disaster. One of the sad, the challenges of how the humanitarian agenda is being applied in Africa is that we use it to respond to drought. Drought is a slow onset disaster. Most countries in Africa that face drought know it's going to come. It comes every two years, every three years. So you prepare for it. But it's almost like we wait when it's coming, so we have drought, humanitarian assistance, or oh, emergency, emergency, we raise funds, we see it again. Then every three years, it's been misapplied. And I believe it's, it's created pseudo economies. You have to understand that when you have a humanitarian presence in a country, it creates pseudo, pseudo economies, false economies. But there's something that started making me, one very particular incident that started making me very active in terms of questioning the role and how it's applied, the humanitarian presence is applied in Africa. Last year, and I've said this many times to people, last year I hosted some Nigerians who worked for international humanitarian organizations in Nigeria, in my duty station in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. And I was bemoaning the situation in the Northeast of Nigeria because I thought these are people suffering. It's a place where you have dignified people. They shouldn't be left in displaced camps. This young Nigerian man told me he was happy and hope the notice crisis would not end because at least he has a job, he's gainfully employed. When he gets to the stage that Africans are feeling comfortable with crisis and disasters in their own countries, they are willing to bear and watch the suffering of their own people because he thinks it's pay, it pays, then we have a problem, then it's being misapplied. Because that's the basis of having international humanitarian presence. He's saying that a government, a people, do not have the capacity to address the situation. You know, very often you hear countries, and this happened in, um, 
in 2016, I think, where Buhari was angry with international humanitarian actors in Nigeria, saying that they were exaggerating the crisis in the Northeast for fundraising. But they need to say it's bad to raise funds. You cannot have your cake and eat it, Africa. You know? And it's the same thing we heard recently. Uh, an NGO was, was kicked out of a region by the military in Nigeria because they were perceived to be feeding, providing food, giving food to the jihadists, they call them. No, we humanitarian actors, dear Africa, know this. We do not take sides. We're neutral. Once you allow us into your country, we provide assistance to all in need. We don't take sides. Humanitarian assistance is, 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 is neutral, is impartial. You know, that's the principles of it. So we will provide assistance to all. So you cannot say you come into a country, but assist this group, but don't assist that. No, we are not in your conflict business. We are in the business of providing assistance to communities in need. And that's what we will do. And that's what I've, you know, so the money is not there yet. When we go out raising funds, the money is not there. Yet, most times when we go raising funds, we do not raise the complete amount. On the average of 50% is raised. But what happens is that by the time we raise 50%, we've announced your problem to the tune of 1.8 billion. So people know you have a 1.8 billion problem. And why would you want to visit a country that has that kind of problem? So when African countries are saying we want to promote tourism, we, want to, we have economic aspiration, but they ignore the fact that every year they go out to, um, as part of other countries to beg for money and to beg for humanitarian funding. You're basically saying we have a problem, we have a crisis, the people dying of diseases, but who wants to go visit that country? Why would I invest in a country that is saying they have so much problem they can't address? Why would I go, to go for tourism in a country that has cholera outbreak? So, when, and sometimes African governments and leaders have fallen into this narrative that the, when you scream your problem is big, the money comes faster from the West. No, <laughs> no, it's crying wolf too much. You know, donors get jaded. We need humanitarian assistance in contexts like Mozambique, the cyclone, there's a cyclone India that caught Mozambique this year. Yes, it was a sudden onset disaster. I'm proud I work for an organization that can be deployed quickly to assist. But we're supposed to assist, build national capacity, support the country, build national capacity and live. Not to sit there for the next 10 years we're there. You know, it, you create communities that start building economies depending on humanitarian presence, like the Nigerian man who is happy that we have the Northeast crisis because he has a job. So that's the issue. Now the money, in terms of the money getting to the people, we know how aid works. We've had critical voices saying aid has not pulled Africa out of any of its crisis because it wasn't in, it's not intended to do so. It's intended to just provide some short-term assistance, assistance for you to take it on. But when you start depending on it, it's depleted. Its impact becomes short-lived. It, it, it ceases to be effective. You cannot just keep people on the edge and expect that they're going to move. So what we do then is to keep people on the air, just on the survival mode. But you know what's sad about it? People start becoming comfortable with depending on external assistance, even when it does not come. They build themselves instead on how to beg and how to present and package themselves to attract humanitarian assistance. In my over or close to 20 years working in this field in Africa, I've seen it grow, grow and that disturbs me. That's why I'm concerned about it in this country, the way it's been applied in this continent. I've seen communities who are sitting down, healthy men and women with their families, who've created communities sitting and waiting for food assistance. I mean, that was not what the intention for having humanitarian assistance in a country. That was not the original intention. Right now, there are about um, 33 countries that are appealing for humanitarian assistance around the world. About 70% of those countries are from Africa. Many of those countries, like I said, have had that appeal for over 10 years. Those countries should review why. They should reflect on what the impact is. And why I'm coming forward and speaking is that many countries are not aware, in Africa where I've worked, are not aware of what it means to have a humanitarian presence. They don't understand the, the impact. They think it's just a quiet way to get extra money or get other people to do some work they should do for themselves. The impact, the damaging impact is worse. So what I've started doing is raising awareness of what it means. It, the, the, the benefit is not worth it. 
if you're relying on a humanitarian presence to address the provision of basic services to your people, the, if the long-term impact is very damaging for you. If you know you're in a development space, focus on that. You cannot be calling the international community to come to your aid or around short-term response every year. You cannot use the humanitarian mechanism to address drought, which is a long-term. So for me, how do they do it? They stop it. There are some things you just decide like, not to do. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.